bless the Lord. Let's make that a joy. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Just leaning and depending on you. Thanking you for the many blessings that you have stored upon us. Thanking you for this day, for this is the day that you have made. Let us rejoice. Father God, we thank you, Father God, for we want to sing your songs of praises, Father God. That somebody's heart will be lifted up. That somebody's mind will be touched. That somebody will turn from their wicked ways and lean and depend on you. We give you all the praise and the honor and the glory. We thank you, Lord. We thank you right now for being our Lord, our God, and our Redeemer. Lift you up high, Father God, for you're worthy. You're worthy to be lifted. And we lift you up high. These and all other blessings we ask in to your name before you say, My Lord, my God, and my Redeemer. Amen. Come on, let's give him some praise. Let's give him some praise this morning.
Let the song talk just like this here. And amen. We love to worship that great name. Hallelujah. If you came to feel better, I hope you know that's what you're going to leave being. Feeling better. Amen. Heavy is the heart of those who love the Lord oftentimes. Amen. Because we're leaning and depending and trusting him for those we love and call our own. Amen. We must continue to believe. Through the power of our faith, when we call on that great name, he still does miracles. Amen. Amen. So if your heart is heavy on today, and you are standing in the gap for a loved one, I will advise you, encourage you on today, don't give up. Continue to call that great name. Whether you feel like it, whether it's taking a long time, or whether you just think you might ready to throw in the towel. But don't give up. And don't give in. Because God is waiting to give us exactly what we need. So while you're waiting, let God work on you. Let God restore unto you the joy of your salvation. Amen. That you might have faith to believe. For somebody else. I thank God on a day for that. Amen. I thank God on that for today. Because that was my hallelujah. Getting up thought. 
God, if you can do it, it must be done. It must need to be done. So I bless the Lord for allowing me to share that with the church on this morning. So for all of you, as I stated, praise and worship, wonderful, excellent. Now we get to do it all over again. Amen. We get to stand to our feet and sing one of these great hymnals of the church. Amen. Hymn number 51. For those of you who have one before you, I will ask that you join with us and turn together all of the saints to hymn number 51. And let us stand and sing with uplifted voices. Hold to God's unchanging hand. We must learn to trust. Amen. Even a seasoned saints. We need lessons in trust. Amen. Trust them all the more. Let us sing as we follow the minister.
his hand. Amen. One of those great hymns of the church. We must learn it word for word. Truly, it will bless you on your darkest day and in your darkest hour. You got to know something that's going to keep that faith and hope alive. Amen. We bless the Lord. We bless the Lord. It's truly, it's good to be here on today. Amen. 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 Praise be to God. I would like to take a moment just to welcome everyone to today's service. Amen. Amen. This is the month of month rejoicing. Amen. So we invite you all into this spiritual celebration Amen. that we are having as we take our hearts and we give them over to the Lord. We are rejoicing this month of April. Truly, when you consider the season of resurrection, we've just exited out. And now we're spiritually, we are placed as God's divine people. I thank God. That I'm feeling the way I'm feeling. Amen. I'm feeling like welcoming you. Amen. I'm feeling like welcoming you. Welcome you into the house of God. Welcome you into his hands, his heart. Amen. Into our love that we have for God. If there be any visitors at this time, just by showing hands. Amen. Praise God. I know we're not all homegrown. Amen. Praise be to God to all those invisible visitors. Amen. We're going to thank God for them. Amen. But I know some people be shy sometimes. But we do thank you for taking the time out of your wonderful Sunday to spend a little time with us. Amen. I ask that you might be encouraged on today as you hear the word of God from the woman of God on today. I pray it might richly bless your soul. But most importantly, I want you to do this as your duty upon leaving from these doors. Tell somebody. Tell somebody. Don't keep it to yourself. Share the love and the joy and the excitement of our Heavenly Father. Amen. God is in the blessing business. But more importantly, he's in the restoration business. Amen. God can restore unto you that which the canker worm has taken. Amen. So we bless the God as the Spirit of God goes forth on today. Remember, we love you. And not only this time, but we extend an additional invitation. Come back whenever the good Lord says so. Amen. We love you on today. Well, the temple, God bless you, and good morning to each and every one of you. Amen. Now at this time, we will have scripture reading. Amen. Praise be to God. We will have scripture reading today by one of our very own Deacon Winfield Thomas. At this time, he'll be reading from Psalms 34, verses 1 through 9. Amen. I shall read from the book, I shall read from Psalms, Amen. chapter 8, chapter, chapter 34, 1 through 8, from the NRSV. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall constantly be in my mouth. My soul makes it boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from my fears. Look to him and be radiant, mm. so yours, your faces, shall never be ashamed. The poor soul cried, and was heard by the Lord, and was saved from every trouble. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him, Amen. and delivers them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good, Happy are those who take refuge in him. God's word for the people. Yes, yes. Amen. 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 Thank you, Deacon Winfield. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. I don't know about you, but I am sure happy to be in the house of God today. And we are, I would say, joyful that Reverend Rouser will be giving us a Amen. 
message from God today. And I hope she knows that she is in our prayers. Amen. We also have a number of announcements. So if you know that you're going to be giving an announcement, I ask that you start writing yourself at this present time. Sister Darla, Sister Corinda, and we have a whole list of others who will be giving some announcements. We ask that you make them brief so that we can keep our service moving. Amen. Uh, we'll have uh, Reverend Jackie come at this time to speak about the grief ministry that will be taking place this upcoming Thursday. We also have Dr. Wade to follow. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, everyone. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. We will have our um, normal grief meeting ministry this Thursday at 6 o'clock. Please make sure that the church office have your email address and the, the invite will be sent out to you um, this week so that you will have the pass code and the meeting ID number. It is so important that we remember that grief strikes all of us at any time. We are all grieving something, not just the loss of a person, but a loss is a loss and grief happens with loss. So plan to be um, at the grief ministry um, meeting on this Thursday, which is April the 18th at 6 o'clock p.m. Amen? Amen. Good morning, church. We are blessed to be in the house of the Lord today. Amen. I'd like to invite you to a, a conference on June 1st at the Church of the Apostle in West Philly. The title of it is, it's sponsored by a group entitled The Goodness of God Within. And the conference is titled, A Conversation Between Head and Heart. And the ideal is that we learn how to work together throughout our being and God speaks to our head and he speaks to our heart. It's an interfaith conference and it will be from 10 until three o'clock on June 1st at the Church of the Apostle in West Philly. And you'll see flyers. Thank you so much. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I don't know about you, but I'm still celebrating, and you should be celebrating 122 years. Amen. That's a celebration. Amen. Come on. Amen. Psalms 107, Amen. 1 to 3. Yeah, that's right. Amen. Somebody feel that spirit, and that's important. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Let the redeemer of the Lord say so, those he rendered from trouble and gathered from the lands, from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. That is our theme scripture for our 122 years of celebration. And yes, we are still celebrating. We have been celebrating all month. Last week we had donuts and coffee. Amen, somebody, come on. This week I still got another treat for you. Hopefully we'll be having mustard pretzels and water ice. I just wanted to do something every week that we do not forget on the fourth Sunday of this month, April, is Whalen Temple Baptist Church 122 year celebration. We're going to have a fine time together in the Lord. So we're going to come together every Sunday. Next Sunday is Blue Ribbon Day. What's a blue ribbon? Blue ribbon stands for that blue and white envelope that you got. Amen. Don't forget about that envelope. And I told you, put what you want to put in that envelope. We asking for 122, but if you can't. We will take whatever you give us, amen? And when you put in that envelope, we'll also make sure everyone receives a blue ribbon, stands for I'm celebrating Well and Temple Baptist Church 122 years, amen, celebration. We want you to make sure that you sign up 
But Sister Beverly Crawford, my sister, amen, raise your hand. Sign up for dinner on for the last Sunday, the fourth Sunday, because if we don't have a count, we don't know how much chicken, and you're going to get mad if I only give you one wing. Come on now. <laughs> Y'all already know. So sign up for dinner next week. We're also asking for uh, um, sweets if you want to sign up to bring uh a dessert you're more than welcome we just want to celebrate and you know what this is our first year of celebrating with our very own pastor Amen. we want to celebrate not Amen. only our church but celebrate our pastor as well for putting up with us for a whole year <laughs> and being a part of our 122 year celebration so come on well and temple let's get together let's celebrate let me see by the show of hands that you're ready to celebrate Whalen temple <laughs> Amen, amen. Thank you. If you have any questions or concerns, please see anyone from the Anniversary Committee, and we can give you all the updates that you need. Amen. God bless you. Thank you. As our announcements continue, I believe uh, Sister Joyce or Minister Newby may have an announcement, but I'll make the announcement briefly. I believe there is a few things going on with the music ministry. Uh, if I'm missing anything, Minister Newby or Sister Joyce, please correct me. I believe the music ministry would like to invite all members and our neighbors to, well, let's keep it, let's keep it simple. We're asking all music members. So if you're on a choir, we're asking you to come sing for the anniversary choir, which will be the final Sunday in April, April 28th. The rehearsal dates to be on this anniversary choir will be Thursday, April 18th, and April 25th at 12.30 p.m. Minister Newby is asking that you let him know or someone on the choir know that you're coming. And if you can't do that, then just be willing to show up April 18th and April 25th at 12.30 p.m. This is for our anniversary Sunday on April 28th. Amen? All right, I tried to make that as clear as possible. All right. We also would like to thank the church for attending our town hall meeting yesterday. Amen. 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 It was such a great event and day. And I want to thank everyone that was on the planning committee. You know who you are. And I thank everyone who stepped up the day of. And I don't want to start calling names. So I'll get in trouble. But some people passed out pens, some people passed out tablets of paper. We are grateful for anything that you did. Even if you collected the garbage, we are grateful for you. And we're thankful for those who helped us with the microphone, even though we had some delays. We are grateful for the assistance and support of our technological staff. Amen? Amen. And I think everyone know that as this year has started, we are slowly making our way through the vision, which we have as SOAR. Everyone know what SOAR is, right? S being social justice, O being outreach, A being after teach, and R being relational. Yesterday satisfied the social justice aspect, and we hope that this is only the beginning and that we hope we can continue it throughout the year. It's not just a one day event. We're trying to carry this out throughout the rest of the year. And I am so grateful for how you responded, Waylon, to attending that event and how you participated in that event. We had over 40 participants, over 40 participants. And that's a blessing. Not only did you come, you participated. We spoke about the issues plaguing our community <coughs> and city at large. And we grateful for not only talking about the issues, we spoke about what are solutions. And this is not the end of it. I believe I heard members come to me personally and said, Pastor, what is one thing that we can leave today saying our church can do? That is still in the works. Do know there will be more to come concerning that. Amen? Amen. All right, as we move on, I'm trying not to make the announcements too long. We also have... Uh, we are, we are grateful to have Reverend Rouser be our, our preacher for today. And I, add, yes, 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 amen. And we ask that you church will continue to pray with her and for her, amen? Amen. 
We kindly ask if you are a member who have joined the church within the last couple months, we are asking you, if you have not already, please contact Sister Paulette in the church office. The number is 215-769-0243. 215-769-0243. I am saying this for the, for the website and also for the video as well. If you're watching online, we are kindly asking you, if you have joined our church within the last few months, we are requesting from the deacons and myself for you to contact the church office and sign up to attend a new members class. We need you to start your classes and we were, would like to kindly request that you call our office no later than this upcoming Wednesday, April 17th by noon. By doing that, that will allow us to know that you're coming on the upcoming Sunday, which will be next Sunday. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. We are also going to ask that you pray for our sick and shut-in. You see them all by name in our bulletin. We're going to just ask you in your own leisure time, please make sure you remember them in your prayers. Of course, we as a church will pray for them. But do know there are many sick among us, even those who are not listed here in the bulletin. Amen? Amen. We're kindly asking you as well to continue attending our Bible study. We are grateful for all those who faithfully come, come but we're now asking you to push people to go past their comfort level. Invite people that you wouldn't normally invite to come join us in Bible study. Amen? Amen. And most importantly, invite them to come to church. Amen. We're doing some great things here at Wayland, and it's not just for us. And uh, we want to thank the junior ushers who I see ushering today. I want to thank uh, brother, brother Cleo and also Sister Nicole for their leadership. We thank you. And we want to make some final announcements here. We, uh, we see that uh, Sister Jeanette Scott who's working with the social outreach service. She made it a yes, yes, yes. We have a great announcement, which I'm gonna read word for word. Now open every Thursday, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. right here at the church. Senior citizen issues. Senior citizen issues, which our church is primarily made up of senior citizens. And this is concerning you. Senior citizen issues. I think that's important. This is issues concerning most of you. Homeowners, are you a homeowner? State government information will be given out and intended to. So if this, in, if this ministry is something of interest to you, we ask you to support her and her efforts, amen? Amen. amen. I won't belabor the point. Uh, Sister Darla spoke to you about our upcoming anniversary and you know about some of the upcoming events and that leads me to our final announcement. And I said I wasn't going to be here long, and I've been here 10 minutes. I apologize. So here we go. Final announcement. So Pastor was, was uh, invited to be the preacher of the hour at Trinity Deliverance Worship Center. That will be taking place today at 4 p.m. I'll be preaching at 4 p.m. The pastor of the church invited me to invite you to come join us if you can. So I'm inviting you as your pastor to please come and support me. I'll be preaching at Trinity Deliverance Worship Center at 4 p.m. this Sunday today. The address is 5044 Wayne Avenue, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, 19144. The pastor's name is Pastor Cole. And the address again is 5044 Wayne Avenue, Philly, PA. Please join us at 4 p.m. Amen? Amen. God bless you and keep you. That will now ready our trustees and our ushers to prepare for offering. It is giving time, isn't it? Yes. Yes, and is everyone grateful for that? I know I'm grateful. Yes, hallelujah. I'm glad that God woke yes. me up. I'm glad that God has hallelujah. found it not robbery to bless me. Yes. I found it great. I'm grateful just to be alive. I'm grateful that I can give. Are you grateful that you can give? I know someone that got laid off this week. I'm not happy telling you that. But did you get laid off this week? Probably not. We can give something. 
We can give something, even if it's one dollar. We can give something. So it is time to give. Amen. Good morning, Willie. Good morning. Amen. Just like Pastor said, as we know, it's giving time, which is an important part of our worship. So we're going to go through our titles, litany, and read it responsibly. Thank Amen. you very much. Amen. It's time to give. Praise the Lord. It's tithing and giving time. Praise the Lord. To whom does the tithe belong? The tithe belongs to the Lord in all the tithe of the land. Whether the seed of the lamb or the fruit of the tree, it is the Lord's. And to the Lord. Who should tithe? Well, every one of you lay by him in store as God has prospered. Why should we tithe? Because the Lord says, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse that they may be meat in my house. Should we tithe our gross or our net? Thou shalt truly tithe all the increase of thy seed, that the field bringeth forth year by year. How much should we tithe? Now consider how great this man was, to whom Abraham gave the tenth of the spoils. And what is God's promise to the tither? If I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there should not be room enough to receive it. What kind of giver does the Lord love? God loves a cheerful giver. It is more blessed to give than to receive. Amen. Let us pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, we'd like to thank you, Father, for allowing us to come together this day to return to you a portion of the blessings that you've bestowed upon us, Father. We ask, Father, that you allow each and every one's heart to be in tune with what they can give and give it with a cheerful heart. We ask these things and all things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. God loves what? God loves what? It's time to give. Amen. Amen.
Thank you, choir. Thank you, drummer. Thank you, musicians. Amen. Amen. All my help comes from the Lord. Do you really believe that? Yes. Do you really believe that? Give God some praise. Because the Lord knows we need him. I've heard someone, I think Deacon Ellison brought up some of the things going on in the world today. And we know them all. We know what's going on right here in the community. We know what's going on right here in the city of brotherly love. We know what's going on with our youth. And we pray for the current youth we have all around us Amen. in this church. Amen. It's one thing to zoom in on a problem, but then there's another thing to thank God for our blessing. Yes. And to think about the solutions. We may not have answers to everything, but we know through it all, God is the same, right? Yes. Yesterday, today, and forever. Yes. He never changes. Thank you, God. So I want to invite everyone who can come to come up to the altar and give God your burdens. Because there were many among us, even privately, who are burdened down. So we invite you at this time, in this moment, to come to the altar, to give your problems over to him. 
He can surely bear them. Deacon Dean, myself, and the deacons and the ministers, we, not, we, not, we may not be able to bear all your burdens. Not, no, we won't. We can pray for you. We can try to teach you as best as we can. But the one that's available to you, 24 hours a day, 24 hours a day. When you try to call Deacon Winfield and he doesn't pick up. When you try to call Deacon Willie and he's at an appointment. When you try to call a pastor and I miss your call, know that you can rely on us to some degree. But who you really can rely on is the Lord thy God. Amen? So this is your moment. This is your hour. Take your burdens to the Lord. Take your burdens to the Lord and leave them right there. Amen? Whosoever will, let him come. As you're making your way to the altar, those who are coming, we know when we pray that the words you hear from our sacred book, the Holy Bible, will bring you much comfort and peace at this time. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty, I will say of the Lord, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God, my God, and him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings, under his wings, you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night. Nor of the arrow that flies by day nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked and because you have made the Lord who is my refuge who is my refuge even the most high your dwelling place no evil shall befall you nor shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling for he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways in their hands they shall bear you up lest you dash your foot against the stone you shall tread upon the lion and the cobra the young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot because here it is because he has set his love upon me therefore therefore I will deliver him I will set him on high because he has known my name he shall call upon me and I will answer him he shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. Did you hear me somebody? I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him with long life. I will satisfy him and show him my salvation.
Let us pray. Almighty God, we come at such a time as this, no form or fashion, but to simply say, oh God, thank you. Thank you. We know that you didn't have to do it. We know that what we got, and I know I said what we got, you understand me, Lord, what we have only comes from you things that we sometimes take advantage of things that we sometimes take for granted we don't have to have it our sight so we can walk and see right in front of us our health our peace of mind oh lord how you keep our families safe from harm and danger and problems and layoffs. We thank you. We thank you, oh God, for helping us to just be. There's some among us that are going through and we sometimes feel that there's no hope in sight. But nevertheless, oh God, nevertheless, we give you thanks for just being alive. For just having the opportunity to step foot in somebody's church. To step foot in this church. To be around of the family of believers yet again. We thank you, oh God, for this branch of Zion. We thank you. We thank you, oh God, as we reflect back on the over 120 plus years you have brought us. Oh Lord, oh Lord, you have brought us a mighty long way. We thank you. We don't take it for granted. We know, oh God, our church can close any year, any week, and any day. But, oh God, you found it necessary for Wayland Temple Baptist Church in North Philly. No matter the trials, no matter the stuff we've been through, you found it so for us to weather the storms. And just like you have allowed us to weather many a storms before, we don't doubt moving forward. You won't allow us to weather other storms that will come our way, that are in our way. But we see through the storm, oh God. We see how you show us, how you show us, oh God. If we remain faithful, if we remain doing what you call us to do, you will keep us and hold us and allow us to continue to be of service within this great community. Oh God, there are many hurting outside of our church. There are some hurting within our church. We give it over to you. We have some assembled in front of our sanctuary today who are bringing some very heavy burdens things oh God you specialize in they appear quite hard for many of us but to you oh God it's a matter of a snap of a finger it's nothing to you oh God and we really believe it oh God we're not just saying it just like the deacons of our church can attest to I as the pastor of this church have been through many a storms and I have seen how you have brought me over I have witnessed for myself how you are a God who is able anything is possible with you so we thank you oh God we thank you as those assembled at this pulpit are on their knees 
praying at this very minute saying Lord deliver me from that upcoming test Lord take away the demons that are telling me it's over please clean somebody up suffering from a drug addiction a drinking issue and all type of issues someone here before us could be struggling with financial issues you know all the issues we get them over to you right now trust and oh god that you can handle them all so we will oh god continue to keep our eyes stayed on you and we will trust we will trust that better days are surely coming we will believe that we know what it looks like we know what the naysayers are saying but oh God in this very moment in this very minute I ask oh God that you allow us to see past the naysayers to see past those who don't support us and to keep our eyes and ears stayed on you that's my prayer today we will as a church continue to march forward we will continue oh god to serve you with excellence we will continue oh god to grow in our faith so that oh god we can grow your church the way you see fit to do so and when it's all said and done oh god we pray that you will give us our wings we trust to be absent from the body is to be present with the lord we thank you oh god you tell us that i am the way i am the way the truth and the life no man comes to the father but through me you also tell us in your word that i can do all things through christ who strengthens me we learn in the new testament of gospel of mark truly i tell you if you say to this mountain if you say to this mountain y'all be taken up and thrown into the sea and if here it is and if you do not doubt in your heart but believe like Deacon Ellison says but believe that what you say will come to pass it will be done for you this is our prayer as we hold on to those jewels of our faith today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen.
and Sister Joyce makes a softly plays and everyone makes their way back to their seat today. We will kindly lift up at this time our preacher of the hour, Reverend Jackie Rouser. She, does, she needs no introduction. She is a daughter of, of our church and I'm so grateful to serve alongside her and the other ministers you have here at Wayland. Amen. So with us all on one accord, we like to lift up Reverend Jackie Rouser as we know the Lord has put a special word in her heart for our church. I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from whence come of my help. Where does my help come from? It comes from you, O Lord. Almighty God, we come to you at this hour asking you, O God, for a special anointing that you have given to Reverend Jackie today. We ask, O God, that you will allow her to speak to your people with thus saith the Lord would have her to say. We ask, O Lord, that you will touch her, that you will allow her to speak with conviction and power. And we pray that if there's one among us who is struggling in their faith, if there's one among us who don't know you as their Lord and personal Savior, that you will not allow them to leave this space and place the same way that they entered. This is our humble prayer that we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
Verses 1 through 8, you've read, you've heard earlier. But I'm going to put an emphasis on the first verse. Mm. 
I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continuously be in my mouth. And if I had to choose a theme, a title, it would be, I will praise him anyhow. Bless the name of the Lord. Lord, I ask that you move in me, God, that I may bring forth a word, that it may pierce the hearts of your children, that we may see you better. And whatever circumstances we are in, God, we will praise you anyhow. Amen. Are you grateful for your life? Are you thankful for God's new mercies and grace every day? Lamentations 3.23 reminds us they are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. We ought to be thankful and grateful that God has given us another chance, another day to bless and praise his holy name, another day for reflecting on how good he has been to each and every one of us. Another day that we can put our hands to the plow and know that because of his DNA, because of what Jesus has already done, it's not in us to throw in the towel. Mm. No, it's not who we are. Romans 8.37 says that we are victorious and we are conquerors. Yes, every now and then, we must put our boxing gloves on and take a stance against the devil's distractions. Mm. The closer your relationship is with God, the easier it gets to trust him in your anyhow situations. I know that's right. The Bible reminds us that we ought to be fully convinced that nothing shall separate us from the love of God. Tell your neighbor, I'm not going to give up. It's not in me to quit. Amen. I'm going to bless the Lord anyhow. Interestingly, the Psalms were written over 1,000 year period, ranging from the lifetime of Moses in the wilderness to Exodus. The book is a collection of lyrical poems. Psalms was originally titled Lehathim, which means praise songs in Hebrew. Most of the Psalms were composed during the lifetime of David and Solomon. There are 150 Psalms. A vast majority of the Psalms were contributed to David. However, there were also other authors. The book of Psalms expresses worship. Psalms encourages us to praise God for who he is and what he has done. Psalm illuminates the greatness of God, affirms his faithfulness to us in times of trouble, and reminds us of the absolute certainty of his word. The psalm should be an encouragement for us to know that men and women who experiences we read about in the Bible they also walked with God and obeyed and disobeyed God. They also had the same emotions and struggles that we have today. Tell your neighbor what you're going through is nothing new. This morning as we prayerfully address today's message, I want to examine us, ourselves, so that we will determine not only on what someone else's stance is, but where do you stand in the Lord? Will you praise him 
anyhow. I feel that one of the most controversial topics in the church today is praise. I want to address the issue of praise because today you don't have to be in church long to notice that folk act differently in worship. There are those who don't sing, don't clap their hands, and wouldn't even dream of saying amen. I even heard people ask them, why don't you participate? And their response is, I praise God in my heart. But the Bible teaches us that if praise is truly in your heart, it will migrate through your body and come out of your mouth. Daniel says it feels like fire shut up in my bones. See, what is in one's heart will affect the body to do something. The scripture says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise will continually be in my mouth. If you know anything about David, you know that he was a king of Israel who had a great choir and orchestra. But David didn't leave the praising up to someone else. No, David chose to walk the path of praise himself and to praise God personally. Before David ever won a single battle, he trained himself to worship and seek God. God has given us the book of Psalms to show us the humanity of the psalmist and to remind us where our hope must be placed. The Psalms tell us that even David, a man after God's own heart, had failures. David himself experienced many times in his times of confusion when he didn't know just what to do or how to get out of his situation, he would proclaim his trust in the Lord anyhow. Notice the word bless in verse 1. Why is it that some of us feel that we only have to go to church to be blessed? If my grandma was here today, she would tell me that the Lord blessed me because he woke me up this morning and started me on my way. If my grandma was here this morning, she would say that the doctor is a doctor in the sick room. If my grandma was here this morning, she would say that he was a lawyer in the courtroom. If my grandmother was here today, she would say he puts clapping in my hands and stomping in my feet. He is a bomb in Gilead. He is a light in the darkness. He is my shield in times of trouble. Oh yes, she would tell me to praise him. Anyhow, the Bible reminds us in Luke 19.40 that if we don't praise him, the rocks will cry out. Let me tell you that God will get his praise. The rocks will cry out. He will get it through nature, from the blowing of the trees, the flowers, through the singing of the birds in the air, from the whispers of the wind, for he is Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. The act of praise and acknowledging who God is and blessing his name is an act of giving God glory and honor for the things that he has done, that he is doing, and that he will do. Now, don't get me wrong, most of us who come to church love to bless and praise the Lord. Most of us don't feel like we are not ashamed of praising God. As a matter of fact, if it wasn't for those of us who gather in his name every Sunday with unashamed praise, some of our churches will be turned into a quiet retirement home or a cold cemetery rather than a place of worship and praise. Amen, somebody. The praise, bless the Lord, bless God, are found primarily in the Old Testament. The Hebrew word bless or praise means to kneel, the implication being to kneel in worship. Therefore, to bless the Lord means to praise him, exalt him, and worship him. Psalm 16, 7 says, filled with blessings upon God for his counsel. 
Psalm 103, 1 says, talks about his holiness. Psalm 103, 22 talks about his dominion. We offer our praise and blessing because he deserves it. We do not add anything to God when we bless him, yet we worship him as our appropriate response to his greatness and his love towards us. In the New Testament, Jesus came instructing us to worship him in spirit and in truth. Ephesians 5, 18, 20 states, be filled with the spirit, addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with your heart, giving thanksgiving always and for everything to God and the Father in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To bless the Lord is a direct will of God that we as the body are called to fulfill the purpose for which God has created us to do. See, God created us to bless his name anyhow. He did not create us to cross our arms, fold our feet, stick our lips out in frustration. He called us to bless his name because he is worthy to be praised. He is due our praise because of his glory. He is due our praise and blessing because of his greatness. He is due our praise and blessing because of his holiness, because of his wisdom, because of his power, because of his goodness, because of his love, kindness, and mercy. He is due our praise because our salvation and because he's wonderful to us. In this text, David's view of praising and blessing the name of the Lord must be a continuously reality. See, it's easy for us to sing this little light of mine when the sun is shining. It's easy for us to, to, to sing, I know the Lord will make a way somehow when all your bills are paid. It's not too difficult for us to lift our hands and say, I will bless the Lord when we have a reasonable portion of our health and strength. It's not hard to bless the Lord when all the doors are open. But will you sing songs to Zion and bless him anyhow? When you're going through, will you bless him anyhow? In the midst of your storm, will you bless him anyhow? In your disappointments, will you bless him anyhow? In your trials, will you bless him anyhow? Will you bless him anyhow in your weakness? Will you open up your mouth and bless and praise and give God thanksgiving when you're stressed and depressed anyhow? Bless the Lord anyhow. Anyhow. See, David recognized that God holds the key to every door opened. That is why David put emphasis on the experiences of his life with these words, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. See, while I study this chapter, David insists that in spite or despite the difficulties and dangers of our life, God has still given us reason to shout. No one can tell your story but you. For only know, you know your story. This psalm, like so many others, has its roots grounded in a hysterical, historical occasion. The historical content of the psalm can be found in 1 Samuel 21, 10 through 22. Many of us have endured or even now are going through spiritual and physical and financial, mental or emotional warfare. Church, I'm telling you that warfare is inevitable. It will occur and it happens when you least expect it. Everyone experiences trouble in their life. It's because we live in a fallen world where there is sin, and evil, and all kinds of negative things. 
We are bombarded with violence and Facebook and Instagram and technology and phones and invitations and sickness and envy and COVID. Our lives are just filled with all kinds of stuff. We live in a world which depletes us, making us wonder if we are truly lovable or valuable in the eyes of the world. The world says, you got to look like this, and you better have this amount of money, and you better live here, and you better drive that. But however the Bible reminds us, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. In other words, only what you do for Christ will last. It takes faith to sing praises when we can't make sense of our lives. It, 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 it takes crazy faith to trust when the world is caving in on you. It takes faith to believe that God will provide all we need when we feel like we need it all. And it takes faith to hear the voice of the Lord in the midst of things that take our attention and drain us of our energy. But I would like to think that David had crazy faith. He trusted and believed God anyhow. Don't think because your life is going crazy that God can't use you. God uses anyhow when that's all that he has. Has anybody here ever had a storm surface in your life and all you could say is, Woo! anyhow. David wrote this psalm after a dangerous situation where he felt that his life was threatened. It happened when David was fleeing for his life from King Saul. We know that through his disobedience, Saul displeased God in making David an arch enemy. So he began to thirst after David's blood. David in dire danger leaves behind his homeland and heads for refuge in Philistine, a nation which was sworn enemy of Israel. Perhaps it is David's hope that he can get himself enlisted as a soldier in the army of King Gath. However, the servants recognize David and they tell the king that David is a feigned and a feared man of war from this enemy camp. It's not difficult for the Philistines to remember and recall how David had slain their best warrior, Goliath, and on his marching back to Jerusalem, singing, Saul killed thousands, but David kills ten thousands. Saul grew jealous of David and made David's life for the next few years a series called Run for Your Life. Have you ever felt like you were just running for your life to stay alive, trying to get to a safe spot from the drama that was chasing you? That's a sure time to praise and shout to God anyhow. So when the report was given to the king who David really was, it caused David to pretend to be afraid. For he knew execution was inevitable if he was caught. So to save his life, David pretended to be crazy. David changed his behavior before them, scratching at the gates of the doors, and he even let his saliva drool down his beard. How many know that fear will make you do some strange things? Have you ever heard the saying, if you want somebody to leave you alone, just start acting crazy. <laughs> David knew that the Philistines had a law per per pertaining to releasing a madman. Yeah. David began looking to God for his ultimate redemption. He began to praise God anyhow. 
See, David doesn't take credit for his creativity in pretending to be insane. He knew that his deliverance was coming by the mercy and power of God. You know how we get sometimes when we pat ourselves on the back, when we escape some issue by deception? I'm going to take a second for us to think about that because the stories that we can tell, thinking that we're going to get by, thinking that God don't see it, all the stories we can tell. But you better check yourself. And give God praise for your deliverance, knowing that it was the grace of God that brought you through and you weren't dead in your grief. See, David's joy of the rescue from the clutches of King Agrash has only the foretaste of the future redemption that God will bring all of us who put their trust in him. So they let David go. He may have acted like he was crazy. But he wasn't insane. Let me pause here and state directly that everybody that act like they crazy is not crazy. Amen. Amen. Some people around you may play like they crazy because they know what they're doing. Now, don't get me wrong. There are people who are truly mentally impaired. But everybody ain't crazy. Everybody. Some people play crazy to get attention. Some people play crazy just because they just don't want to do the right thing. Some people play crazy just to deflect their bad attitude and behavior. Sometimes when we're going through our trials and struggles, it may feel crazy. We may feel like we're all alone. You may feel like no one else is enduring these problems but you which causes us to make bad choices yes, yes. because of our lack of trust in God. Uh -huh. But we must remember that everything is not what it seems. Just because the role looks straight don't mean it's straight. Just because he or she looks good doesn't mean that they're good for you. Just because something rides good doesn't mean it hasn't been around the block a few times. Can I get an amen? Oh, yes, when we put our trust in God, he reveals to us that we are not alone. And it is at those times that we realize just how good God is. All we have to do is open up our mouths to tell the devil what thus saith the Lord. Psalm 16 a says, I know the Lord is always with me. I will not be shaken for he is right beside me. Psalm 27, 10 says, Though my father and mother may forsake me, the Lord is near. I don't know about you, but I'm going to stop here and pause and thank you, God, for always being there for me in my anyhow situation. That's right, that's right, that's right. I like it, I like it. Praise God. That's a good word, Reverend. Praise his holy and righteous name. Thank you, God, for my anyhow situations. See, God knew David's plan before David acted upon them. When will we learn that nothing takes God by surprise? Actually, it is God who allows the ups and downs in our life. He teaches us. He shepherds us. He humbles us. He breaks us. He takes his truth and shapes us in his will, not ours. Do we allow our life situations to determine our destiny, or do we focus on the one who can handle the situation and trust that he will help you to finish the race? See, God isn't just a deliverer. God is a sustainer. He'll give us strength to survive in our situations. When David placed his total trust in God, he escapes the cave of Adullam. In the cave, he was joined by others who were also in trouble. Isn't it funny how misery loves company? But you don't have to entertain negative situations. You don't have to entertain what the naysayers say. 
You know, some of us have been in trouble for so long and been down for so long and feel like they by themselves and disappointed that you get a, hmm, I guess that's the way it's supposed to be. Some of us have been rejected and ejected for so long that our strengths fell us to praise God. One thing about Satan is that he does not work alone. He is always going to send witnesses to make you think and to just make you know just how bad your situation really is. But the Bible says in Revelation 12:10 that Satan is the accuser of the brethren. Satan's target is our heart and conscience. His weapon is accusations. His purpose is to make us ignorant of God's word and God's will. He's good at convincing you. Did God really say that? Or don't you think God meant it that way? Or is this situation so far gone, God don't care nothing about you? Have you ever heard Satan say that to you? I know I have. Amen. Tell the truth. Well, we know what happened to Adam and Eve in the garden. But when I read Psalm 27 too, it says, when the wicked, even my enemies and my adversaries Come came on. upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. And the Bible says in Revelation 12, 11, 12, that they who overcome and conquered him because of the blood of the lamb, hallelujah, and because of the word of their testimony, yes, their praise, their faith moved the mountains. Church, don't you know, I don't know about you, but I'm going to praise God anyhow. Because I know a God that keeps a little fire burning in the inside, and when trouble comes, I, I, I get a signal, the Holy Spirit, to turn up the flame, and the hotter the problem, the louder my praise. Oh, I don't hear you. Can I get a witness? Is there anyone today that needs to just shout anyhow? Don't you know that no weapon formed against you shall prosper? Tell Satan it just won't work. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I will. Everybody needs somewhere to go to reminisce, to reflect to remember the word God is, God was, and God has always been a reward of those who diligently seek after him no matter who you are. Yeah. See, Jesus is looking for those who are not afraid to speak in season or out of season during good times and hard times. David sings regardless of his situation, just like David, I will bless the Lord anyhow. In times of giving, I will bless the Lord. When I'm up, I'm, I'm going to bless the Lord. And when I'm down, I'm going to bless the Lord. And don't wait to come to church to bless the Lord. You should have done that at home. You better say so. We shouldn't have to wait you better say so. for the preacher to warm us up with song or scripture. But you need to bless him anyhow. We should come ready to praise. Oh, yes. Yeah. You know, some of us walk around here like God owe us something. With your head and your nose so far up in the air that you don't even see the traps that the enemy has set before you. Some don't speak, some don't smile, but the Bible says in Romans 12, 3 that you should not think more highly of yourself than you ought to. Be honest in your evaluation, measuring yourselves by the faith God has given you. We should not just look thankful, but we should at least say thank you, Lord. Don't allow your situation to rob you of your praise. David was in a cave, and he turned that cave into a church. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Maybe in your dark place today, you may feel, um, maybe you feel like your back is a 
against the wall, or maybe you feel like your storm is raging. Let me tell you, it's not the place. It's God who makes the difference in the place. Not the place. Open your mouth in spite of your situation. If God has healed you, you are the praiser. If God has protected you, you are the praiser. If God has delivered you, you are the praiser. If God has kept your family together, you are the praiser. If God has given you a breakthrough, you are the praiser. David said, praise will not only be in my mind, but it will be on my lips. Problem is, we just can't keep God on our minds. We also got to put him in our mouth. See, them two things flow together. What we think comes out of our mouth. Don't you know that there's favor and there's overflow of blessing when you praise them? If you're going through something right now, just hold on a little while longer. Don't give up. You may feel like you can't make it, but hold on to his unchanging hand. Children not acting right, praise them anyhow. When you are talked about, praise them anyhow. When you're lied on, praise them anyhow. Just lost your job, praise anyhow. No money in your pocket, praise them anyhow. Negative God report, praise them anyhow. People not respecting you, praise them anyhow. Bills due, praise them anyhow. Oh yes, God will give you an overflow. He will give you favor. What Satan meant for evil, God is working out for your good. How many know what was meant to kill you because of your praise? God brought you through. God uses all what Satan took from you to give him the glory. I'm talking about the God that created the universe with his word. I'm talking about the God that set the sun in his socket and crowned the moon as the queen of night. I'm talking about the God who plucked the stars in the sky and gave night explosion. I'm talking about the God that created the heavens with the work of his fingers and scooped the valleys with his footsteps. I'm talking about the God who manufactured the mountains as well. I'm talking about the God that divided the seas in a matter of seconds and taught the rivers how to run and brooks how to babble. I'm talking about the God who put the green in the grass and the wet in the water. I'm talking about the God who made the seasons come some to his own nature. Can I get a witness? Amen. That's all right. Hallelujah. I'm talking about the God who taught Tom how to rotate from day to night and night to day. Oh, no, he didn't stop there. I'm talking about the God who took clay and formed man in his hands and loved him into existence and gave him CPR and blew breath in his life. In other words, I just stopped by this morning to tell you, I'm going to bless the Lord anyhow. No matter what happens, come what may, I'm going to bless the Lord. Anyhow, no matter how dark the night, church, anyhow, whether poverty or plenty, anyhow, whether forsaken or forgotten, anyhow, church, shout, anyhow, church, shout, anyhow. Oh, yes, God we serve specializes in being a friend to the friendless. He specializes in being a mother to the motherless. He specializes in being a father to the fatherless. He specializes in bringing down mountains and leveling the valleys. The God we serve is a way maker. He's a heart healer. He's a mind regulator. He's a burden bearer. He's a heavy law carrier. He's a rock in the weary land and a shelter in the time of storm. He's the water in dry places. He is the bread in the seven land. He's a bridge over troubled waters. And when I think about, and when I think about, and when
to you. Bless his name. Anyhow, anyhow, when I think about how good he's been to me, when I think about he set me free, when I think about how he kept me from losing my mind, the joy I had, the world didn't give it to me, and the world can't take it away. Anyhow, Bless the name of the Lord. 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 You gotta know. You gotta know. Hallelujah. You gotta know. You gotta know. Bless him anyhow. Praise God anyhow. I don't know about you. But I feel like praising the Lord. The doors of the church are open. Whosoever will, let them come. Amen. Amen. Whosoever will, let them come. The Holy Spirit is in this place. We know that you may have come into our church one way, but it is our prayer and our belief that you will not leave the same way you entered. The Lord is here. Amen. The doors of the church are open. Whosoever will, whosoever will, please come. With all heads and eyes closed and heads bowed, we pray for that fellow brother and sister who's among us today, who's struggling who know that this is their day. The Lord is standing with arms wide open. And he's saying, daughter, he is saying, son, this is your day. Please come. There's no time better than the present. Tomorrow is not promised. Whosoever will, Please let him come. Word of God says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth on him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Do you believe that? If there is one among us who just need prayer, feel free to walk to the front. Either myself or a minister will pray for you. This is your time. Be in my 
my mouth. As we prepare for prayer. As we prepare for prayer. If there is another, this is your time. We invite you to come if you need a personal prayer. Does the deacons and the ministers pray for our dear sister? Is there another? This is what we do at our church. We come alongside you. We don't talk about you. We don't gossip about you. We love you. So if there's one among us, we got more than enough deacons and more than enough ministers and deaconess who are willing to come alongside our dear sister or brother to lift up a prayer. Amen? Amen. Is there another? Is there another? This is your time. Can you please help? All right. Chair, Marvin, chair. You just over there. Um, Dad, would you mind? Is there another? Is there another? Hallelujah. Minister Donnie, we need your help. <clears throat> um, is there another? Hallelujah. Is there another? Thank you. Thank you. Is there another? I think everyone in our church see we some personal prayers are going on. Instead of looking at them, we ask that you bow your heads and pray for them as we pray together.
Amen. Amen. Family, thank you, thank you, family, for your patience with us this day. Sometimes we have to take a moment out, just like we did, with no form of fashion, because there were many within our midst who need personal prayer. So just like we did today, you may see it done again. This is what a family of faith is all about. It's not routine. A lot of us come here with a lot of life issues. And that's what we as a church is all about. We're not going to talk about each other. We're not going to tell each other's business. But we're going to pray and come alongside those who need some love and support. You see our deacons sitting up here and you see them standing out there. They're helping in a variety of ways. You've seen the ministers and myself, we're praying. But we are here to be your fellow brother, sister, and myself as your pastor. We love you and you're not alone. So hold on a little while longer. Help is on the way. do it anyhow oh Reverend Jackie Rouser preach she preached from her soul I pray that God continue to bless her and I know you're going to support her with her grief ministry on Thursday but most importantly, we trust and know that you have heard from the Lord today. And we will now ask that you plan to depart this space and place, but never God's presence. Because I believe he is always with us. Amen. 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 We had church. We had more than church today. <laughs> As Dr. Wade said it best, we had a celebration. Amen. As we all plan to depart this space and place, Amen. you please rise for our benediction. Oh, we at this time, at this time, I want to invite the trustees to come forth before the benediction is given to collect the offering at this time. 
I do want to move forward with our offering. Feel free to have a seat, Waylon. My apologies. Amen. Amen. And I will take some direction from a trustee. It appears that we're going to walk around, trustee. Okay. We are now hearing that we will have the ushers plan to collect our offering. Amen. 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 As our ushers come forth this day to collect the offering for our own Reverend Jackie Rouser. Praise God, to whom all blessings flow. Praise him anyhow. I'm a ride home, and I got to preach this afternoon. <laughs> Reverend Rouse, I'm going to remember that message. Praise God anyhow. I'm going to be preaching at 4 p.m., and I'm going to say, praise God anyhow. God bless Reverend Rouse and all the ministers. We thank God for each and every one of them. Thank you for that wonderful message, Reverend Rouse. As we all now rise for our benediction. Now to him who was able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our savior, be glory and majesty dominion and power both now and forevermore let the church say amen amen go in peace to love and serve the lord amen Yes.